Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics, and in this video, I'd like to discuss Rishi Sunak's tentative moves towards scrapping inheritance tax through the prism of the potential for a snap election this autumn. Basically, it's hard to see how Sunak's moves on inheritance tax can work for him politically if he delays the election well into next year. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So there continues to be speculation that the cabinet might be discussing the prospect for a snap general election this autumn. Uh, even if they are, it doesn't mean to say that they will think it's a good idea. Uh, but if the cabinet are deciding, I can imagine those who think they spy a chance for promotion once someone leaves may well be in favour. The likes of Sweller Bravham and Kemi Badnock, they'll be up for it. But there is no way of really knowing how serious this is, unless, of course, they call it next week, I suppose. But I was thinking about the inheritance tax proposal a bit more and decided that this, this points towards Sonak maybe thinking seriously about an election sooner rather than later. I've already discussed a lot of the advantages for the Tories to have an election this year in a recent video. When I say advantage, what I mean is they get away with a lot of the disadvantages of having it next year. But it doesn't mean that Tory MPs necessarily want it. But the inheritance tax proposal, as in, you know, dropping it all together, that adds an interesting dimension. Now, let me explain. First of all, if Rishi Sunak actually scraps inheritance tax, that means a shortfall in the budget of over £7 billion. Now, where does he get that from? If cuts were easy, Sunak and Hunt would have made them already. There's lots of people saying, you know, and it's quite right to say about this inheritance tax thing, it's just a tax break for the, the very wealthy, the, the, the top 4% of the population. And, and that is true. But how does he do it? Physically, how does he do it? You know, the, these cuts, they can't make cuts because the, they wouldn't have put up the tax if they had. So what happened was first Sonak as chancellor, then Helms as chancellor. They've given us a higher tax, the highest tax burden in generations. And it's still going up. It's still going up because the tax bans are fixed. They'll try and say, oh, the tax bans are fixed. That's, that means it's not going up. No, that fixing the tax bans makes it go up because what it means is, they're actually going down in real terms. Because as people get pay rises, you get pay rises each year, right? Now, if they're below level inflation, it's really a pay cut in real terms. But as a number, it's a pay rise. So many people who were just below a particular tax band are now finding themselves in a higher tax band for some of their income, meaning they're paying more tax, even if it's a real terms pay cut. So the tax burden is just going up and up. The Bank of England has indicated that the cost of borrowing is going to go up more than expected. So that creates another problem for the budget as well, if you're looking for tax cuts, that is. So the fiscal headroom for any tax cuts is really difficult. Neither Sunak nor Hunt will want to emulate Truss and Quarteng and announce an unfunded tax cut. So they're going to have to find money in the budget. They're going to either have to make cuts but any cuts they make create other political problems or they're going to have to raise some taxes, but that creates political problems as well. There's all, I mean, there's talk of a real terms cut to universal credit. They think they could get away with that, you know, and you could think, well, maybe they could do that without spooking the markets. I don't know. What I do know is if they do this, what they'll be doing is hitting ordinary people in order to give a tax break to the richest 4%. A lot of Tory MPs will understand the danger of that. They will see the I know they don't care about people on low incomes, but they will see the danger. They, at the moment, we're in the parliamentary cycle, even if the election was like another year away. Tory MPs are now in that mode of seeing even ordinary people as, well, they've got votes. They've got votes. And, and that's another baffling aspect to this. Like, if you were going to cut a tax, why would you choose inheritance tax as you are approaching a general election? Isn't that the sort of thing you do after a general election, not before it? See, what Tory MPs want is a cut to income tax. Because if income tax is cut, ordinary workers can see that reflected in their take-home pay. They can see it on their payslip. They may still be worse off because of the higher cost of living. But there'll be a piece of paper they can look at and go, oh, that number's gone up. Yes, that's your take-home pay, my lad. We've cut taxes for you. Isn't that nice? Oh, yes, my pay's gone up. So, although lots of people think quite incorrectly that they will have to pay inheritance tax at some point, so there's a distressing number of people in favour of abolishing it, people aren't actually going to see the benefit of scrapping inheritance tax. But they would see it 
of cutting, say, income tax. Now, Sunak hasn't committed to scrapping inheritance tax, but the thing is, he's making such positive noises about it. It's almost like it's priced in. People are now expecting it. Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, would be due to give a budget statement next month. Now, if he doesn't announce, if it all goes normally, say, let's say we don't have a general election announced, so they go to that budget statement. If he doesn't announce any tax cuts, if he keeps saying, as he is now, well, the economy is not really in a great shape to be doing tax cuts, sorry. So if he doesn't announce any tax cuts, whether income tax or inheritance tax, those on the right who now think this is going to happen, who pretty much think this is now going to happen, because Sunak's talked positively about it, they will be very, very unhappy bunnies. You know, Sunak might try and say, well, the economy is not yet ready for it, uh, but it will be coming. In fact, you know, given that it's not realistic to actually scrap inheritance tax without increasing other taxes to compensate, it sounds more like a manifesto promise that Sunak just doesn't intend to honour. And it's entirely possible that he doesn't introduce the cut in the next budget, that he announces the next budget statement next month, doesn't announce the tax cuts, the next budget, which will be like next spring, doesn't announce it then, but then promises it in the manifesto for next year's election. But I just think he'll have a lot of angry newspaper columnists if they don't get their tax cuts announced in some form or other in this autumn budget statement. Because you can sort of imagine, let's say he's going for a May general election next year which is possibly more, more normal, then there's no, there's sort of a budget statement just before that, but it could, it'll be an election budget statement, a little bit different. But what if Sunak is, as some believe, planning that snap, snap election this autumn, you know, planning to announce it next week, and the election therefore takes place like November? That means there won't be a budget statement next month. There'll be manifesto promises, but they can be ambiguous. They're held to much lower standards, weirdly. You know, besides, although a budget statement has to add up, manifesto budget, no, doesn't. Like Boris Johnson's manifesto spending commitments didn't add up in 2019. The mainstream media either pretended that it did or you had to read between the lines. I remember the Financial Times describing it as, a, oh, we're not really sure that these spending plans can go ahead without putting taxes up. What they meant was, the spending plans weren't realistic without more taxes, which Johnson was promising not to raise. Therefore, the plans don't actually add up. Which meant that either he was lying about some of the spending plans or he was going to be putting taxes on. Which, of course, they did. But this is the Tories. The media don't say things as explicitly about them like that. Only Labour have to make sure their plans add up. So Sunak could announce the election at next week's conference. He could promise cuts in all sorts of taxes in the manifesto. Might not even add the qualifier about when the economy is ready. Just make it ambiguous. Thus giving the impression that it could happen immediately. The same media outlets which treated Quarteng's mini-budget with respect. Bear in mind, Quarteng's mini-budget, which is now about as popular as dog poo on your shoe, that was hailed by the media at the time. And even the media that weren't like shouting from the rooftops were like treating it as if it was a serious budget. So, of course, the same outlets will do so for Sunak's manifesto proposals. They will aim to rescue some of their under threat seats with this promise of tax cuts and leave the shit heap that's coming our way in 2024 for Labour to deal with. And I, I don't say that this inheritance tax proposals means that I think now that we're likely to see a general election announcement this autumn. But I do think it sort of points that way. I, I just look at it and I just think, if we assume that the general election isn't this autumn, isn't Sonak making a rod for his own back here? Isn't he going to struggle to hold his coalition together if now that he's letting them think they're going to get this tax cut announcement, that they don't? And I've seen no sensible commentator saying how he can actually deliver this tax cut in practice. You know, how he can actually find this seven odd billion pounds. So interesting. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.